What's going on, everyone? It's Adam and Craig with Grandstand Golf. This is our tournament preview for the 2021 PGA Championship. This is our quick hitting preview show where we try to give you early insights to the upcoming tournament. Craig, let's jump into some quick hitters. Our previous winners of this tournament, Colin Morikawa is defending. He won last or last year in San Francisco. We got Brooks Kepka, two-time winner, Justin Thompson, Justin Thomas, Jimmy Walker, five Americans, four of which the last four were all in their 20s, so there might be a trend there. And Jason Day are our recent winners. This is, of course, the 103rd PGA Championship hosted by the PGA of America. That does mean that top 20 PGA professionals from the 2021 PGA Professional Championship gain entry. Uh, it's the strongest field in golf. I think we have everybody in the top 100 except for Tiger Woods. And, of course, it is contested at Kiowa Island Ocean Course. Yeah, that was a, a lot of quick insights there. I, I can't even take that all in at once. Um, I hope you can <laughs> take a breath. Uh, but, yeah, you know... It is the strongest field in golf. I, I did a little bit of research trying to figure out uh, the majors relative to each other. And this one actually stands out, you know, fairly decently in front of all the yeah. other ones, which surprised me a bit because people think of the PGA Championship as, you know, maybe the lesser of the of the majors, but they shouldn't. Yeah, I know. I, it kind of surprised me as well with those 20 uh, professionals as well. But it's the strongest. In, it's the strongest in golf. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit Kiowa. So Kiowa Island Ocean Course is going to be interesting this week. It is, of course, uh, located in Kiowa Island, South Carolina, designed by Pete and Alice Dye. Uh, it did host the 1991 Ryder Cup as well as the 2012 uh, PGA Championship, won by Rory McIlroy, of course. It is a seaside course, all past Ballam grass. So it's going to be interesting. A lot of people think of it as a link style course, play along the ground. But that past Ballam grass is grabby and you can't see that you, you can't see play the ball along the ground as much as you like. So that will be an interesting factor going into the week, of course, with the length, 7,800 yards, the longest major championship ever, par 72. It's going to be very interesting this week. Yeah, for sure. Uh, past Palom, you know, I think it's becoming more and more common. Uh, one of the big things, and we got into this on our, our preview podcast, which if you know, if you want to, I think we went about an hour only this time, uh, not quite as long as our <laughs> yeah. master stuff, but uh, you know, a lot of these guys are, are members at Bears Bears Club, Bears Club down in, right, in Jupiter. In Jupiter. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we've got DJ, Rory, JT, all these guys play this kind of thing every time they go out to practice. So something to keep in mind. Um, um, and the 91 Ryder Cup, it is an epic one. It was very shortly after this course was built. So, uh, you know, if you can track down anything during the week, you, I'm sure it's going to be all over Golf Channel. So check that out. <laughs> for sure. So it's not an annual course on the annual rotation, Craig. What are we going to do for Horses for Courses? What do you got for us this so week? So Horses for Courses, essentially uh, this week, you know, when we don't have the same course every year, I like to do best tournament history. So we're not, you know, we're not yeah. just going to look at the single year this was played. Uh, we're going to look at who does the best in PGA championships. Um, and, you know, honorable mention, I got to give the shout out. You don't see him here on this list. Call Marikawa. One for one. The first time he has a major, <laughs> yeah. uh, he is a win. But uh, unfortunately, what, I, what we're looking for is maybe trends. We're looking, we're, I mean, sure. one for one is a pretty good trend, but we need to see a little <laughs> more sample size than that. So starting out, we got Brooks Kapka, you know, Mr. Major himself, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, two times winner, uh, Bell Reeve in 2018, Beth Page Black in 2019. He has eight starts at PGA Championships, seven top 30s six top 15s wow. and four top five. So essentially half the time he shows up to a PJ championship, he's in the top five. Big game hunter. Yeah, keep that in mind because Kevin apparently said that he was not a legitimate fade when I faded him going into the week. <laughs> um, next up, Rory McIlroy, two-time winner. Obviously 2012, he had won it here before uh, by a record amount. So that's a pretty darn yeah. good horse or course, uh, maybe more specifically to this one. Uh, and then 2014 at Valhalla, uh, he's got 12 PJ Championship starts, a single missed cut, six top tens, four top threes. So, you know, he, I mean, it's freaking Rory McIlroy. He's probably... Half the time he's top ten, that's <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jason Day up next. He's the winner 2015 at Whistling Straits. He has 11 starts at PJ Championships, two missed cuts, nine top 25. So 11 starts, the two missed cuts. Every time he makes the cut, he's getting into the top 25. Six yeah. times in the top 10. And he was also, he won at 2015. He was runner up the next year to Jimmy Walker in 2016 at Baltrasol. Right. So, uh, you know, he's been pretty darn good. Um, unfortunately, maybe not the same form he had in those years. Yeah. Uh, Justin Thomas, five starts, no missed cuts, 
three top 20s, two top 10s. Obviously, he had the win at Quail Hollow in 2017. So that sneaks right. him onto the list above Dustin Johnson. DJ, you know, if he had the win, he probably would move up a, a spot or two here. 11 starts, two missed cuts. He has six top 10s. So, you know, similar to Rory and, and Jason Day. Um, and back-to-back runners up. 2019 to Brooks at Bethpage Black and right. uh, 2020 to Colin Morikawa at TPC Harding Park when, uh, you know, he entered the back nine with the lead there. So uh, DJ comes in fifth. DJ gets second last year, but he gets fifth on the list and Morikawa is excluded. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, you got to, you know, back to back seconds. Let's see what Colin can do this year. If you disagree, if you think someone should be on it, let us know. Comment below. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the guys coming in hot with good form, best recent form. You know, this is usually for them. This is a pretty stellar list this week, Craig. But number one, you can't deny the South African, Garrick Higo. Absolutely on fire right now. Four straight top tens, but two wins. Two wins in his last three starts. Absolutely incredible. He is on fire. He dominated in the Canary Islands. He is the hottest player in the planet. You can't deny that right now. Absolutely. And I think with these next two, we should put it out there. We are recording this Saturday night. The yes. uh, AT&T Byron Nelson has not yet com- completed. Uh, so, you know, maybe one of these guys might have let Frog Higo, but but we don't know yeah. what's happening yet. On Monday, I might look foolish, but right now, Jordan Spieth, who's 17 under, and I think T3 in the tournament, Brian Nelson, is number two. So it's a little bit uh, longer. That's why he gets bumped into number two. So he had that COVID-19 diagnosis. We weren't sure how he's going to bounce back. Clearly, it's 18 by Byron Nelson. He's playing very well. He had the win at the Valero Texas Open, T3 at the Masters, five top fives in eight stroke play events in 2021. Mm-hmm. Just consistently at the very top of the leaderboard. Yeah. That brings us to number three, who might be a two-time winner when you're uh, watching this. But right now, he only has a one win, his first win at the PGA uh, at the Valspar. Uh, But he is in the bar at the lead for the Byron Nelson right now at, I think, 20 under. 20 under. He's got a one-stroke lead over KH Lee. God, one-stroke lead. Number four, Hideki Matsuyama. He has that Masters win. He's playing for the first time since then at the Byron Nelson. He made the cut, but you got to give respect to the Masters winner. He hasn't played a lot, but he made the cut, showing not a lot of signs of rust. But right now, that's good enough for him, having dominated Augusta. Yeah, so far this week, the ball striking looks really good. It's just a short game. Maybe needs a little bit of a tune-up. Yeah. Brian Harmon is number five, and this might be a little bit surprising to people, but if you've been watching kind of week in, week out, you can you you definitely yeah. realize why he's on this list. Uh, five straight top 20s, including a T3 at the Players, a T12 at the Masters, five straight tournaments he's been in the top 20. That is incredible form, incredible consistency. Brian Harmon is number five. Yeah, and some of those are courses that you would not think fit Brian Harmon that well. So I think that's yeah. the one that's what's even more impressive. Like, you wouldn't think that Augusta is a, a, a perfect setup for him. Totally. So uh, even though this course may not fit him, well, don't discount him. Exactly. Okay, first look projection. So uh, the Grand Sand Golf model, uh, you know, again, similar to Horses for Courses, it's a little bit different because usually we are able to have a whole bunch of data just from this course yeah. itself. So we kind of, uh, we've used PGA Championships, and then obviously that one year we had in 2012 at uh, Kiowa uh, to ba- make this, but uh, Bryson DeChambeau is up top. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's not a whole lot you can say about it. His his over the past two years, his strokes gain total um, really is carrying it. And then once you start to look at this long, yeah. difficult course we're going to be at, um, we'll, we'll see whether it translates. But the model definitely likes him. JT up next. Uh, the putting has been a concern of recent, but um, for sure, everything else looks pretty darn good. <laughs> uh, and then yeah. Xander, uh, every tool in the bag, similar with Webb. I, I think the one thing you'll see with uh, you know three, four, five there, uh, Webb, Simpson, and then John Rom. All of them are good putters. So, I mean, I, yeah. I think actually all of these guys are. It's just Justin Thomas is the only one who's not in good putting form. But it is going to be very important uh, putting this week. Yeah, and we talked a few tournaments back how far in front Bryson is this year in strokes game total. Like, I think he was 0.3 better than Brooks. That is in second. So, he's he's not just playing well. He, he's playing very, very Although well. The qualifier I'll put on that is PGA Tour strokes gain data does not use the Masters. So, yep. Yeah, Bryson's sure. if you look at Bryson's with those in there he does start to to come back to the pack yeah for sure okay that leads us to the most interesting man in the field and you know we got that Jordan Spieth chasing the Grand Slam but I went elsewhere I went Rory McIlroy 
Two-time winner, as Craig mentioned, of the PGA Championship, 2012-2014. He set the record for margin of victory at the 2012 PGA Championship. Eight strokes at this course at Kiowa. He's coming off a win at the Wells Fargo when people thought he had some rust and he wasn't his best. He come out, gets the win. Now he's the odds-on favorite at the PGA Championship. It's remarkable how elite he is to just have one little weekend go right and now he's the he's the best player on the planet yeah again. it doesn't, doesn't take long for him to be a, a betting much. favorite yeah uh but the question i think i'm going to throw out there is major draw like he hasn't won since that 24 pga championship so it's been quite a few years since he had that big big tournament win that major championship win so comes back to a course where he dominated on he's coming off a win everything seems to be aligning for rory can he do it this this year i don't know well, you know what I'm going to say, but I'm just happy someone is, other than me is talking about Rory for a change. So uh, yeah, I like it. Sure. I think it's going to be very interesting. Very excited to see what happens. Yeah. Our way, way, way too early weather forecast, Craig. And the one thing I got to say about this is kind of disappointing. I mean, the main defense of the Kiwa Ocean Course is the wind. And right now, when we look at the wind, you know, peaking at 11 miles per hour, 12 miles per hour, it looks sunny, not that much rain. I think... It's not going to be as hard as we, we kind of... Yeah, I hope. mean, it is long and it is like there is a lot of difficulty to it. It's more just if the wind blows, this becomes a like a punishing course. So it's it's not that it's yeah. going to be boring if the wind doesn't blow. It's just going to be, uh, you know, the best golfers in the world will be able to score on it if, if the wind isn't blowing. If the wind does blow, it's going to be very, very exciting to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that is our quick hitting tournament preview Thank you, everybody, for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to their channel. It really does mean a lot. Enjoy the PGA Championship, and make sure to watch our other PGA Championship content coming out soon. Yep. Take care. We'll see you next time, guys. Take care.